Please join me in welcoming our presenter, Ms. Samantha S. P. Mitchell, who is the Manager, Curriculum Department at the Youth Training and Employment Partnership Program Limited, better known as YTAP Limited. She has been an educator for over 25 years and possesses a Master's in Education with a Curriculum Specialization. She was actively engaged in TVET, having completed course. would be the end of the webinar, definitions, some benefits of technology and learning, some challenges of technology enhanced learning, why technology enhanced learning in TVET, the exciting possibilities of tell and TVET, remodeling and to tell or not to tell. So this is not a lecture. We are not in a classroom. It is not a lesson in technology. It is a presentation on the main aspects of TEL, the challenges, and of course, its possibilities, which is the highlight. And it is an invitation to embrace TEL in TV. So much can be said. I love this. I love before and after photos because they speak to what was and what can be. And I'm starting with the before because before speaks the foundation. It says that there is something solid that we can work with. I'm leaving the before picture at this moment, but we will come back to it later because it has implications for us with this afternoon's presentation in terms of where we are and where we need to move to. Of course, we need to start with our definitions. And sometimes we come across TEL as technology enabled learning, and we also see TEL as technology enhanced learning. Terms and also related. I like to see technology enabled learning as the more holistic term, which speaks to any learning and related activities that includes teaching, assessments, etc., which are made possible by assisted, expanded on, etc., by relevant digital technology. We also have TEL as technology enhanced learning. And as the term enhance implies, we speak into activities which are improved, updated, expanded on, extended, complemented by, etc through technology, through the infusion of technology. I see a relationship between the two and that I see technology enabled learning as the overall overarching term and technology enhanced learning as an, a component of technology enabled learning. So we also have TVET technology, technical and vocational education and training, sorry, 
which is the focus for today as opposed to academia. And we have Tel and TPET and combining the two, the various forms of technology which improve, update, expand, complement, extend learning and by extension teaching and related activities in technical and vocational education and training. There's blended learning where we combine the traditional with the online environment and of course it covers teaching and learning activities which which take place in both environments with specified time being divided between each and we may have a 20 percent for online and an 80 percent for practical but 30 percent for online and 70 percent then because there are different ratios of blended that make up blended learning again the two components face to face and online and e-learning is any learning which take place in virtual environment right so these, these are the key definitions for today as we move into the other aspects of today's presentation there are many benefits of tell this slot does not allow us to actually go into all the benefits of tell but we have some benefits being the infusion of technology, supporting a more interactive, stimulating environment, facilitating, sorry, supports attainment of, sorry, Mary, it was just coming too slowly, so now I can pick it up. Right, so there are a number of benefits to tell and that it provides authentic learning experiences. It supports attainment and that is a very important point because of course it's more than a buzzword that sustainable development goals need to be achieved by 2030 internationally. Right, And sustainable development goal 4 speaks to the need to reach an all populations with education Right, and tell health helps to ensure that we reach a wider audience we're either, either with mobile learning or center learning community learning and whatever and it closes the gap between industry and the classroom because tell within the classroom ensures that we are actually able sometimes to bring even animation or to use virtual reality augmented reality or 3d animation where we could actually show a factory in 3d or augmented reality right and it also ensures that the technology that is used within the classroom when trainees go out in the world of work they are already familiar right so these are some of the benefits of tell There are also challenges, and I think that is what keeps back a number of persons from actually infusing technology intel. And it's because there is an initial investment on outlay, which can be prohibited. Right? Quite often, an agency does not have the extra money to buy the infrastructure. The, to invest in the infrastructure or the software necessary for tell you also need required human resource expertise what does that mean once you are converting or transitioning from the traditional environment to the technology and you need persons who are able to make the transition making it possible for example instructional designers are able to upload the content yeah you have content developers who could prepare content for the online environment because it's not just about taking it out from a book and putting it into the online environment you need to ensure that you incorporate videos audio quizzes interactive which will stimulate motivation in your trainees. And then you also have the, the 
change in mindset from traditional to an e-learning environment. I mean, we have seen it, for example, as simple as getting a, a senior to stop using the Me Too like we would say. They are afraid. Sometimes people believe that, you know, these Android Android phones are spying on them. And of course, there is technology somewhat because we do know that once we start surfing the net, for, for example, or we on Facebook, we start getting certain ads, you know. So we do know that there's some level of big brother type interference in the in software of that nature. But at the same time, we cannot always be afraid of what's new and what afraid of what is technology because that is where the world is going. If we think of the first to digitalization, for example, everything now is online and etc. Right? So this is just an example of the need to get into tell. Practitioners believe that TV should be a face-to-face, -face, hands-on experience. And nobody could deny that. TV is practical. TV is working with the hands. That is what separates it from um academia uh, in a big way but at the same time there are aspects that do not need to be done in the classroom in fact we could flip the classroom for example by preparing training to the practical by uploading the needed content the the soft skills that they could look into they could also look at videos that prepare them for the world of work and for the classroom and so there's so many things we can do there are also questions which arise on the quality of online and i would like to right away indicate that quality assurance in online tv or technology and enhanced learning and tv is not an issue there is rigor in online TV, if we want to put it as simply as that. And we can ensure by using rubrics, by using international standards, that we incorporate all what is needed in an online course that is necessary for quality assurance. We could speak more of that later on. All right, so we have a quick quiz. And that's one of the things that happen with that's easy to do with TVET. If we use that H, if we look at H5B, which is an interactive type plugin, that it's, it allows us to easily make quizzes on an LMS. This, however, is just a quick audio quiz. And it shows you too that even in doing a presentation, you could quickly incorporate audio. And later on, you will also see video into the presentation. So we have a quick quiz. The following relate to TEL and TVET. And State story. true or false? A creates an authentic learning environment. B requires human resource expertise. C widens gap between industry and the classroom. D supports attainment of SDG 7. Right. Now, Ray, could you repeat that? The following relate to TEL and TVET. State true or false? A creates an authentic learning environment. B requires human resource expertise. C widens gap between industry and the classroom. D supports attainment of SDG 7. Good. So, Nari, should I give answers now or should we leave them for later? Give five minutes and we'll come back to you. All right. There are true and false responses. Now, this slide is deliberately wooden and one th component of tell that we need to speak to which is not really overtly stated in our presentation is the fact that you're dealing with trainees of different intelligences if you know gardner's theory of multiple intelligences it says people learn differently all people have their own type of intelligence whether it's spatial whether it's musical whether it's visual whether it's audio kinesthetic with the hands and we need to keep it we also need to speak to differently able training 
means whether they from the deaf community or those who are blind. And this slide deliberately has quite a few words which are difficult to read. But however, just by incorporating an audio file, we could cater to two different sets of differently able students. The deaf student could read, but the blind student could also listen. Right, so Nare, we will share the audio file at the moment. Audio 1, Whitehall and TVET. Industry is changing faster than TVET. Digitization and digitalization demand an agile and more adaptive workforce. Extract from Adapt or Die, future-proofing TVET colleges for a rapidly changing world in the face of the fourth industrial revolution and quickly evolving technology, unless TVET colleges develop a technology plan, they will be irrelevant. Artificial intelligence is going to revolutionize the job market, with TVETs being an essential part of education, it's vital for them to develop digital teaching strategies that meet the challenges. Graduates already face an uphill battle to find employment so they have to exit their courses with the ability to adapt to a changing work environment as quickly as possible. New jobs will replace traditional jobs and these will require a different skill set. Future learning is micro and blended learning and curriculums will be online. The workplace will be transformed and digital will be utilized to reskill staff. Robot automation projected to take 800 million jobs by 2030. It's estimated that the half-life of a job skill is about five years, every five years, that skill is about half as valuable as it was before. Workers will be outpaced by AI and automation and the pace of innovation may be faster than the ability of workers to reskill. Learners are more discerning and competition for TVET learners will be fierce, TVETs already play second fiddle to universities. Source, Adapt or Die, Future Proofing TVET Colleges for a Rapidly Changing World. Retrieved from https colon slash slash www.eiffelcorp.co.za slash adapt hyphen or hyphen die hyphen future hyphen. Thank you. Right. So I want to pull up, Nare, if you could go back to the slide. There are some key points and it's not to scare anybody, but they are important because sometimes we keep asking why is tell and keep it necessary. The world is changing. The audio said that AI will revolu revolutionize the job market. We have automation, for example, in agriculture, whilst we speak to manual skills. A lot of the mega farms now use automation to water, to etc. So therefore, there's less need for manual labor. Graduates need to adapt quickly to the changes. The micro learning curriculum. It says that you will have a lot of the curricula online. Every five years, a skill is half as valuable. And so me, we may study now and feel okay. We have a degree, we have a certificate, we have a diploma. But in five years, that degree, that diploma, that certificate, that master's, whatever, will not be as valuable as it was. And the tell changes are happening quicker than we are able to adapt. And these are sober and false, but we need to share them because sometimes we want the wise tell being pushed in Tibet to understand that if we don't make the changes, we will be left behind. Right? There's a similar argument in the following slide. Right. Audio 2 Artificial Intelligence AI, will change the demands for skills in the labor market. The skills of the labor force fall into five categories, non-routine cognitive skills, non-routine non-cognitive skills, routine cognitive skills, routine physical skills, non-routine physical skills. China's labor market has an increasing demand for non-routine cognitive skills, non-routine non-cognitive skills and routine cognitive skills, but decreasing demands for routine and non-routine physical skills. Considering that the development of AI will lead to increasing demand for non-routine skills, 
educators are supposed to develop students' non-routine cognitive skills and non-routine non-cognitive skills by giving more integrated courses. Source. Okay, all right. So now, Ray, just go back to that slide quickly because that study focused on China. But what is happening on Ch in China is relevant to anywhere in the world, relevant to the Caribbean as well, right? It is saying that there is an increase for higher level skills, analytical skills, cognitive skills, and a, a lower demand for the more routine manual skills. We spoke earlier on about agriculture for example being taken over by automation right somebody builds those machines that are used on the agricultural farm somebody operates those machines these are physical skills these are manual skills but they're not routine physical skills they're higher level physical skills right and these would be more in demand we look at non-routine cognitive skills and non-routine non-cognitive skills and we have routine cognitive skills when you think of the persons developing ai and virtual reality and augmented reality right these are not ordinary skills they require a higher level of thinking right and that is the essence of that study and our the trainees need to be equipped with those skills that they could manage in the work environment. Okay, so Nareya, we could skip the next slide. All right, the bottom line is that it is important that all employees, and we could substitute that with trainees, have the right level of analytical skills to also fill cognitive non-routine jobs. Businesses and slash training agencies training agencies must be prepared for the next economic shift or market change. The world was taken by storm with COVID-19. Right? What is the next market change? We are in the fourth industrial revolution, like, like as stated. Right? Are we prepared for the constant agility of technology and the digital environment? Right, a business and by extension a training agency that has invested in the skills of its workforce and by extension trainees is one that will be able to lead. And what are the implications for TVET? TVET institutions have to ensure that their programs build analytical, non routine, cognitive skills and their trainees, which will allow them to move beyond declining labor intensive repetitive jobs. Much of this is possible through TEL. And what do I mean? As I said earlier, TEL allows us to front load. It allows us to incorporate the employability skills. It allows us to bring in the soft skills, conflict resolution, collaboration, etc. And collaboration is key in TEL. And we have software or plugins or applications, as we will see later on, which allow for collaboration among trainees. Something as simple as using a wiki in the classroom, and that is available on a learning management system, could bring trainees together. And once you deal in a collaboration right away, you're looking at communication skills, you're looking at team building skills, you're looking at conflict resolution skills, right? So these can be easily infused and front included outside of the classroom. The good thing is there's mobile learning, which also allows the trainees to access these skills from their mobile phones. Okay, so it is not difficult, but it is necessary. All right, Mary, we could move. All right. So this poll can easily be done with an add-in, which is another te um, technology tool, like polls everywhere. Unfortunately, the software was not, it kept coming up as an error. So we have it here as an ordinary slide, but it's easy to incorporate it. Mary, I think you did something for us online, right? So we have a short poll and it's asked the first question the pace of innovation may be faster than the ability of workers to reskill do you agree t 
TVET agencies can become irrelevant if they do not develop a technology plan. True or false? And thirdly, robot automation is projected to take 800 million jobs by 2030. Some persons may say, well, I will not be around by 2030. But at the same time, it's important to think about it now. How do you feel, especially the younger generation? Are you prepared? So we will leave the poll right now in the chat and we could come back to it. Thank you. Anisha, any questions? Not yet? Good. <laughs> right. So welcome to the exciting world of tell. It can't be just academia and theory and studies. What is available? Because sometimes people think that it's not available, it's too much to invest. Firstly, I need to say that there are a lot of free resources out there, free tools, free software that could help you. There are even free learning management systems, but we'll come back to that. What does TEL allow? Technology enhanced learning enables collaboration. Right? You are able to use learning management systems. We are able to incorporate quizzes. And of course, people find quizzes fun. Even something like crossword puzzles, etc. H5P, which is the interactive tool I spoke to you about earlier, would allow for that. Videos, podcasts, augmented and virtual reality. I, I'm not sure how many of you watch the AGT finals. I really want said metaphysic to win because they were able to project Simon Cowell and, and even Elvis Presley. But it was a bit scary though, which is the other side of technology because it shows that, you know, we could project and that is what you call deep fake because you also have the fact that persons could use virtual and augmented reality to twist things. So with metaphysics, Simon Cowell was projected onto a screen. And if you were not watching AGT all along, you'd say, wow, I didn't know Simon Cowell could sing so well. But it is virtual and augmented reality. And that is, that is a side that is cute, but it's also a bit scary. Right? But we're going back to the classroom. You have simulators, which are expensive, but they could also ensure that you are actually immersed in what is happening. They're driving simulators, for example. I know police are able to use these with their trainees. Right? We have social media. We have synchronous, which is happening in the moment, and asynchronous, which is happening not simultaneously and we're able to upskill right meaning that we're able to keep learning and we have also e-portfolios which help to showcase the work of the trainee or the tutor and also show the development of the skill okay so that's an overview let's touch on some of them Right. And we kept speaking to collaboration. I mentioned some of the names. And why do I want to showcase collaboration? Because it is a key skill for the workplace. You cannot survive in the workplace without teamwork. Right? And with teamwork comes conflict. Collaboration allows you to deal with that conflict. Right? You have team building. You have put pair tutoring and learning with collaboration, right? So this, they support learning as students play active roles in developing the um, materials, etc., along with their pairs. Right? So we have some of them like Kahoot, which is a lovely, fun application to use in the classroom. We have Quizlet, which, as the name implies, speaks to technology which uses quizzes to help learn it. We have Microsoft Teams, of course, which we're using in the world of work. We have Seesaw, the learning journal, which is an example of an e-portfolio. 
be, where trainees can collaborate and they could do their individual work. And we also have Google tools, which continues to, you know, Google continues to push out technology so rapidly. There's so much to get. And then I love co-spaces, Eddie, which I haven't tried myself, but it is a web application which allows for collaboration in 3D and then trainees use code and to go into augmented reality. Okay, next we have AR, VR, 3D, right? And we mentioned code spaces a while ago. So we speak to artificial intelligence, robotics, augmented reality, virtual reality simulators, virtual conferences, Google expeditions, 3D animation, etc. It is just so huge, right? And with augmented reality, as the name implies, you start with the real, the real and you project <clears throat> so to, to become augmented, enlarged, etc. as opposed to virtual, which normally is not reality at all. Augmented, however, starts with reality. And to show how these can be used in the classroom in whatever skill, I am going to the next slide, which shows a video of a factory 3D animation. Right, so we have this skill, heavy machinery offered by White Limited. And this is how the tutor could incorporate a video into the classroom. That little video, which is less than I think 30 seconds, I think it's about 27 seconds, could show so much. It shows the forklift, it shows the position of the driver, it shows how the forklift is used, it shows the movement of the forklift. It shows how he reverses after. Right? So in 27 seconds, you could learn so much that a tutor may have had to display outside, face to face, and that may take half an hour. And that's the beauty of technology. Okay? Right. Thanks, Marie. Right. And then we have the LMS, the beautiful LMS. Moodle and Modo, Schoology, Google Classroom evolved. Of course, Google really came on board with COVID, but it has evolved more and more with features that relate to a full learning management system. Right? And that is, for me, the classroom online. You could do the same things with a learning management system as you could do in face-to-face. -face. We have trainees and tutors interacting, uploading videos, uploading podcasts, doing quizzes, um, doing, uploading their e-portfolios, surveys and polls to give feedback. You have social forums for collaboration and the use of an LMS is just magnificent. The good thing is one of those Images says five free LMS software solutions for persons who feel, well, they must invest money in the software. Understand that there are platforms out there that are available free of charge. Okay, we could move on. I'm noticing the hour is flying. <laughs> Marie. Right? We could get creatives. A, a hairdresser might wonder, but what's in it for me? Or, or would would work or, um some uh, joiner, etc. Again, get trainees involved. Take pictures, take videos of them at work, and then you have these authentic experiences that you could upload into the learning management system. The good thing it is there for posterity. 
right? You don't have to keep asking yourself each cycle, what am I going to use? Because once you create those and upload them, then it's easy for you to just repeat. You could uh, import your, your course for another cycle, change what you want to change, update it, bring in new information, and you know, so you get creative. The beauty of all of this is that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And we speak about open educational resources. And as the name implies, they are open. They are available to everyone. Right? So quite often you may go to an image on the net and you would see at the bottom licensable, or you may be asked to pay for it. However, open educational resources, you use them, you just ensure that you accredit the owner or the creator and that is done using creative commons licensing which is the image at the bottom whenever you see the cc cc is creative commons you you would also see for example see with a slide a, a dollar sign with a line going across it that says non-commercial use right share as it says to you you cannot change it right so they are free to you but there are conditions under which you will use them. Again, if we think of plagiarizing or intellectual property, it tells you, of course, it's not your work. Give credit where credit is due, but it is free. Okay? Yeah. Upskill and opportunities. We And I want to refer to the audio we brought in earlier on that the agility of technology and digitalization is happening so quickly that we can't keep up. We can't always go to a classroom for three months or a year to, to do a certificate or diploma, etc. I, I have found that as I've gotten older, as much as I was teaching academia, right now I don't really want to read five pages. I want to find the shortest video. Right? And there are upskilling opportunities online. For example, Moodle has a number of free courses, Coursera. And Moodle, Commonwealth of Learning, they all have massive open online courses or MOOCs, M-O-O-C-S, which you could do free of charge. Udemy is another excellent site. However, you have to know when to buy from Udemy because not everything is free. Udemy has some courses that are free, but at the same time, there are times when one course will be 85 US. There's another time that same course would be 12 US, and you just have to know when to catch the sale, right? Coursera has been offering courses free of charge, and these courses, a number of them come out of universities. They created by university lecturers, so we could speak to quality, right? Some of them allow you credits, for the university so it's not because it's online and it is a short four week course it means it doesn't have the quality and rigor of a normal course right so the opportunities are there for us to constantly upskill and often they are free of charge if we again if we think of the agility of technology and it's the changes that are happening around us upskilling opportunities are there and we should grasp them Right? And what's holding you back? We can speak to all of that and we're not on board. Is it fear? Is it lack of knowledge? Is it of the urgency? Lack of opportunity? No buy-in? Lack of money? Again, some things are free to us and we need to invest in ourselves, in our trainees by grasping what is free. Right? We should not allow fear to keep us back because there's always someone who could help, who is willing to teach. Okay? Three. Transitioning. What does it take? It requires building on the existing foundation. And I go back to the previous picture of the house that we started with at the beginning. There's a foundation and we need to build on that foundation. But to do that, we need the rest of the family to say, yes, we need to renovate, we need to remodel. 
it will require planning, it will require funding, it will require HR expertise, infrastructure, software. It may require demolition, and I'm using the term again of, in, of remote and phases and house repair because sometimes we have to remove some things some information and the traditional course may be obsolete and we have to take it out before so that's the demolition part and there will be challenges there will always be the need for continuous evaluation and improvement but at the end of the day the end result is worth it yeah and this to me i love this little video because it shows what happens even when we're trying to remodel and let me not speak more about it and just allow it to play for a few seconds right and this is jenga <laughs> notice how the young man kept looking at it will it happen will it happen will it titter? will it fall oh gosh oh gosh oh gosh and that happens for us when we transition into technology because there are times we're not sure if we're going to get it right how much we could push how much we could pull you know when we test it and pilot is it going to work you know and these are questions that are met with temerity and you know, we feel, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh gosh. But again, the end product. When we could look and say, all right, yes, the software worked. Yes, this pilot. Yes, we tried it out and it worked. And this to me was just beautiful in terms of transitioning. Right? To tell or not to tell. To technology enhance learning or not. Technology in TVET is meant not replaced. So this is why we have that hand-in-hand -hand image. It provides myriads of possibilities. There is. It increases time for practical learning, frees up time for trainees to engage in cognitive, self-directed, tutor facility that student centered activities as well teachers themselves have the opportunity to go online and upgrade their own skills see what is out there and in the industry internationally simulators or divisional components virtual and augmented reality interventions bring industry to life as we saw with the, the forklift earlier on right Learners have the opportunity to use a variety of methods and assistive technologies to acquire competence at the workplace. And you have the initial work. Yes, it takes time to get the work onto the learning management system, but the good thing is it can be repeated. Once it's done, it's there. You have a shell that you could import for the next cycle, for the next year. Right? And that is the beauty of TEL. So the initial background work takes time and it takes energy and there's uncertainty, etc. But once it's there, it is easy to make the changes and to upskill. And if something out comes out new in the industry, we could put it into the course on the LMS. Right? Right. And it allows some more other agile updating of content and tell can help integrate TVET with STEM. With that has been around for years in academia, science, technology, engineering, math. It could integrate its team, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. It, could, and it allows integration with stream, science, technology, robotics, engineering, arts, and math. So as the, the time goes by the tools also change right and what do we mean by that there are aspects of of things like science technology engineering that seem to be only for academic trainees but some quite often when i look at electrical installation for example or i look at plumbing and i see you know the physics and the maths and technical drawing etc as an academic i i can't do any of that or the calculations you know and I find that technology enhanced learning 
allows us to create that bridge immediately. It can support active learning where you get the trainees totally involved and can develop 21st century higher level cognitive skills. All right, so there are myriads of possibilities. For me, it's the bottom line is this, until we internalize the extent of the possibilities and advantages of enhancing TVET through tell, we will continue to be limited by blind loyalty to the traditional. That is it for me. We have to move. And this is what after looks like. We started with the old rundown house, but tell enhances learning in so many ways of the creativity, the collaboration, the tools, the learning platforms, the um, open educational resources, the, the means of agile um, updating, etc. of content. So this is what after looks like for me, without tell to tell. Right? And I love this course. Um, quote, sorry, by George Kulos, who is a leading international influencer in innovation and leadership. And he says, technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can, can be transformational. And that is profound for me. Technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. So keep calm, you're not fired. All right, so let's chat a bit, Tanisha, over to you. <laughs> can be transformational. Can be transformational. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Mitchell. Taking in what you have said Thank this afternoon, you. it is evident that there are numerous benefits that can be derived by both teachers and students when technology enhanced learning is employed. I, being a part time student yes. who engages in blended learning, really intrigued by the variety of tele applications and tools that are available synchronously and asynchronously. This caters to the diverse needs of learners. And while the obvious benefit of autonomy through remote access and learning is lauded, it is the concept of lifelong learning through TEL and the opportunities for upskilling that you spoke about that are yes. particularly impactful. Yes. Especially when we consider that the world of work and associated competencies are rapidly involved, evolving. Yeah. All right. And you would have um, asked a question. I just wanted to give the response before we delve into the question and answer segment, the poll Sorry. way would have asked the TVET agencies can become irrelevant if they do not develop a technology plan. Well, of yes. course, obviously, and I'm sure after they would have listened to the presentation, 100%, everyone would have voted true. So yes, and yeah. that was definitely relayed in the presentation. All right, so we now um, segue into our question and answer segment where you, the members of the audience, can participate. We will attempt to address as many questions as the remaining time on the law. Well, we have about nine minutes, but I have one question from Mr. George Byfield, who said, um, I, work, I have worked in media and communications for over 20 years across several markets in the U.S., and believe that TVET learners are more suited for this industry than the traditional four-year graduates. His question is, as the marketing communications industry is going through massive disruption post-COVID pandemic, moving more towards digital virtual distribution of content, will TVET learning also move towards virtual augmented reality in preparation for industry 4.0? Ms. Mitchell? Wow. This is a loaded question, but yes, my straight answer is yes, we have to, whether we want it or not, we have to. Again, I keep using the terms digitalization and digitization. Well, more relevant to us now is digitalization. The fact that everything around us is changing and you cannot 
banks have stopped um, allowing you to come in to, to, to get a statement. You have to go online. Everything that you, you need to go make an appointment now, you can't make a call, you have to go online. And we have to move as TVET institutions, right? given the trainees that technology, right? Are we moving to augmented reality and virtual reality? I showed earlier on mm -hmm. how we could use 3D animation if, with the forklift to mm -hmm. teach, you know, micro learning happened right there, but so much happened in 27 seconds. Yeah. So virtual reality, yes, is the way to go. It will take some investment. It will take some relearning. You have the fact that the technology is expensive for augmented and virtual reality. But I mentioned earlier on about co-spaces edu. It has a basic version which could allow TVET institutions to actually develop, encourage trainees to develop courses in 3D, using 3D animation and code, coding to move into virtual and augmented reality. So definitely, I agree with the uh, call the writer that it is important. We have to move through there yes, to there. Most definitely, and what. Also struck me um, during the presentation that um, that little clip you showed with the Jenga and um, yes. talking about you know the beauty of tell and you know you, you're not sure if you're going to get it right but um, no. well we have to make that step towards that transition yes only then we would know if if it works we pilot to see if it works but we have to make that step when we look at how technology is moving how digitalization is happening yes so that particularly struck me struck me as well yes you're correct throughout your presentation yeah all right um any other questions <laughs> well um <laughs> we could also go to the quiz nari had to tell us give us the responses to the first quiz okay. we had four questions and the audio quiz I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Do we have yeah. those available? All right. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> the pace of, all right. I'm now seeing, right. The other one was the pace of innovation may be faster than the ability of workers to reskill. 88% agreed with this and 11% disagreed. Okay. Um, any comments on that one, Ms. Mitchell? <laughs> Um, the reality is, I mm -hmm. think within the Caribbean, we are still within the bubble. We are small and we depend on manual labor. We know the mechanic and the, the handyman, etc., the plumber. Mm -hmm. Our farms are not mega farms mm -hmm. all over. So we are not so much into automation and agriculture, for example. But the fact of the matter is we are a global um, system mm -hmm. and we should be developing trainees who could also be global citizens, right? So whereas the reality has not hit, it is true. It is happening. Sadly, persons are losing jobs. There are things that you needed to go to the bank to do. And right now, you don't need a teller anymore, yeah. right? And that is a reality. It is sad, but it is a reality. Most definitely. All right. Well, we those were actually the two questions we would have received um, feedback for. Okay. And looking at the time, we... <laughs> Yeah, we I don't think that time. I'm not sure if at all we got answers to the first audio quiz. There were four questions. Yes, we would have um, received a response for the um, where the TVET agencies can become irrelevant if they do not develop a technology plan where 100% everyone agreed. Well, that was true. And then yes. second one, in terms of the pace of the innovation may be faster than the ability of workers to reskill, where 88% would have agreed and 11% disagreed. Disagreed. Right. right. There were two other questions in that first quiz 
whether mm-hmm. well, you can technology see. is widening the gap between industry and tell. And that was false. And okay. there was the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, it will come back. Anyway, let me let you go on. It was oh, all right. You can go ahead. It was, touch on it. That's fine. <laughs> it was about SDG 7, but it is actually uh-huh. false because we were speaking to SDG 4. Okay, all right. Like education, etc. Yes. No problem. <laughs> yes, sure. Okay, so there you have it. We have come now come to the end of this webinar. Firstly, we wish to express our appreciation to you, Ms. Mitchell, and by extension, White Up Limited as a valued partner in Tibet and Trinidad and Tobago. I think we can all agree that the flexible and blended learning is the way forward for education globally. Through access to relevant technology, can though access through the relevant technology can sometimes be an obstacle. TVET likewise must continue to harness tell in an effort to make content both engaging and accessible to learners at all levels. Thank you to all those viewing and listening live. Please be reminded that you can view this presentation and all previous webinars on the NTS YouTube channel, and we encourage you to subscribe to our channel and like share these webinars if you wish to send us feedback or suggestions or for those who didn't get an opportunity to ask us a question you can send us an email at webinar at ntatt.org that's w-e-b-i-n-e-r at ntatt.org i am anisha Carrot walcott reminding you to look out for further communications from our team for a copy of this session's recording do have a great afternoon and an enjoyable weekend Thank you, Anisha. Thank you, Nare. <laughs> and